uh, contact areas, glue areas, each with their own parameters, and then you use these ads to combine them all into one uh, contact set or uh, glue set. Uh, we also introduced um, a, a glue, the glue capability for acoustic meshes. Uh, we, we, you know, we've had the glue capability for structural meshes. Now for an acoustic mesh, you know, when you're uh, modeling a volume, for example, of air, you can have differential meshes and join them together with a glue condition. And a, a classic example of when you might need this is when you're modeling uh, interior of a car. Often, oftentimes, the seats are modeled with uh, also as an acoustic type representation, just with a different density than the air. And you want to, you know, join that acoustic uh, mesh for the seat with the cabin air, and the glue condition can do that. The glue contact can do that. And here's an example that shows the accuracy of the uh, acoustic glue example. On the left, we've got an acoustic volume with a continuous mesh, and on the right, an acoustic volume with a glue mesh. You can see the lower half is modeled with TED elements in the upper half with hex, but if you look at the the uh, contour of the uh, modal uh, pressure result, you can see they're almost identical. And if we look at a response calculation of the uh, from the blue mesh model and the and the continuous mesh model, we get almost identical results. So this is showing that we can get very accurate results using the uh, glue, glue contact with an acoustic mesh. Uh, for contact, we introduced what we call contact reuse. And what this allows you to do, if you do a static analysis with a contact in it, you can write out now with the parameter, this KG, KGGCPCH, will write out to a DMIG, that's a, a matrix input file, I'll write out the contact uh, stiffness matrix. It's very easy, easy then in subsequent runs to import this uh, contact stiffness so that you don't have to re now recalculate the contact. And for example, you can go do a dynamic analysis and include the effect of the, uh, the contact without having to resolve for it. You've already done it once in a previous solution. You have about four minutes left. Okay, I think that should be fine. So, so here's an example where we, uh, where we solve for the modes of a uh, contact example here where we've got a, a cover and a casing and we applied bolt pressure load uh, and came into contact and we solved for the modes uh, one time in a solution 103 that had a contact uh, subcase in it. And in the other case, we solved it where we brought the contact condition in from a DMIG, uh, previously calculated solution, and solved for the mode. And, and we get identical modes, which you'd expect. And also, if we do a forced response calculation, you can see uh, the two functions at, on the lower end of the, of, the, of the graph, which are identical. So that's when we use contact with the DMIG and contact uh, all as part of the same solution, give identical results as we'd expect. Then for contrast, we show, well, what if you ran that um, model without including any contact and the only connection between the cover and the case it's just the beam element that represents that bolt, but it didn't get preloaded. You can see there's a big difference in the response, and that just goes to show in a lot of these cases, contacts can have a big difference in, the, in your uh, response calculation. Uh, another enhancement for seven was this maximum results capture. This is a capability that we had uh, work for transient analyses. What it would do is over a complete transient analysis, it would in one data result set capture the maximum result that occurred anywhere in that transient. You could show that in just one contour plot. 
We extended this concept to static analysis, so if you had multiple subcases, we would capture the maximum result from all the subcases. So you can see in this example from subcase one, two, and three, we're showing the maximum value. Uh, and so you can see near the base of this cantilever, the maximum comes from like subcase one and subcase two, whereas out near the tip, the maximum stress value came from subcase three. Mark, this may be a silly question, but is it maximum and minimum, like if it's a maximum negative? Oh, this is just for raw amethyst, or would it be? Well, it's, it's for every single uh, uh, result type calculation. So we can ask, the user can ask for um, maximum value or maximum absolute value. So it would capture the maximum uh, negative value absolute-wise. Great. Uh, modal contributions, we extended the capability for modal contributions. So if you're doing a modal analysis, modal force response analysis, and want to understand which modes are contributing most to the response, we, we have that capability now where we can do it and look over the entire response, look at which mode is contrib contributing the most, or we can look at specific frequencies. So for here, example, in this helicopter simulation, this red uh, function shows the total response to an applied load, and we did, we have modal contributions turned on, and we asked for the high, five highest modes, and you can see that mode 20 there, that blue function, is the highest modal contributor over the entire range, and then you can see there's a number of other modes that contribute, but are actually much smaller than than that mode 20. Or if we, we can look, like I said, at a specific, specific frequency and do a listing at that frequency. So here at 140 hertz and 210 hertz, we give a listing of what modes contribute the most right at that particular frequency. And again, you can see mode 20 is the highest mode. Uh, then for nonlinear, uh, some enhancements we did there uh, for advanced nonlinear, we now have nonlinear um, thermal mechanical coupling analysis. So you can do a thermal analysis and a mechanical analysis at the same time. And so you get heat transfer from contact now, that sort of thing, and you get heat generated from uh, friction. So you, that kind of simulation now is available. And lastly, there's some new uh, material models in advanced nonlinear. We've got a, a new hyperelastic material model that uh, works without curve fitting. You, you just directly use a test measurement uh, as your material model. And then we now have also a shape memory alloy material, uh, commonly used for things like stents and uh, modeling orthodontic uh, wires.